Howdy SEO Moz fans, welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. This week, I'm wearing a hoodie and a t-shirt, so it must be informal, but I want to take you in a casual fashion into the topic of personalization, user data, and usage data. And these are complex topics. This, is, this Whiteboard Friday will not be able to cover all of the different areas that user and usage data and personalization touch on. But what I do hope to do is expose you to some of these ideas, give you some actionable insights, and then allow you guys to, to take some of those things away and we can point to some other references. There's lots of folks who've done a good job in the search world of digging in deep on some of these other topics. So let's start by talking about some of the direct impacts that personalization and usage data have. And, and of course, by personalization and usage data, I mean the areas where Google is showing you or other users specific things based on your, your usage activities, where they are leveraging usage data, broad usage data from many users to come up with different changes to those types of search results, and where they're leveraging user personalization uh, on a macro level, taking the aggregate of those things and, and creating new types of results, re-ranking things, adding snippets. I'll talk about each of those. So in these direct, impacts, one of the most important ones to think about is location awareness. Now, this is particularly important, if, obviously, if you're serving a local area, but you should be aware that location biases a lot of searches that may not have intended to be local simply by virtue of their geography. So if you're at a point, right, if I'm here in downtown Seattle, there's location awareness that affects the results ordering. So I can perform searches, for example, for uh, Coffee Works, and I will get the Seattle Coffee Works result. And perhaps if I was in uh, Portland, Oregon, and they had a Coffee Works in Portland, I'd be getting those Coffee Works results. Usage history also gives Google hints about your location, meaning that even if you're searching on your smartphone or you're searching on your laptop and you've said, don't share my location, Google and Bing will still try to figure this out. And they'll try to figure it out by looking at your search history. They'll say to themselves, hey, it looks like this user has previously done searches for uh, Madison Market, Seattle Trader Joe's, uh, used our maps to get directions from Capitol Hill to Queen Anne. I can guess based on that usage data that you are in Seattle and I will try and give you personalized results that essentially are, are tied to the location where I think you're at. Fascinating example of this, I was searching on my desktop computer last night which is not, I haven't made it location aware specifically, but I did a search for um, a particular arena in Dublin, which is where the DMX conference that I'm going to in a couple of days and speaking at is gonna be held. And then I started typing in the name of the hotel that I was at, and it's a, it's a brand name hotel. And what do you know, that location came up, the Dublin location of the brand hotel, even though that hotel has locations all over the world. So what, how did they know? Well, they know because I just performed a search that was related to Dublin, Ireland, and therefore they're thinking, oh yeah, that's probably where he's looking for this hotel information as well. Very, very smart usage history based uh, personalization. And do be aware, search suggest is also affected directly by personalization types of results, right? So if you are doing a search uh, that is you know, gonna be biased by some element of personalization, either your search history, your location, those kinds of things. Auto-suggest will come up uh, with, those, with those same biases as the, as the rankings might. Next, I wanna talk about the uh, semantics, the semantics of, of how you perform queries and what you're seeking can affect your search as well. And search history, is, is an important biaser here, right? So basically, if I've been doing searches for um, jewelry, gemstones, uh, uh, you know, wedding rings, those kinds of things, and I do a search for Ruby, Google and Bing are pretty smart. They can realize, based on that history, that I probably mean Ruby the stone, not Ruby the programming language. Likewise, if I've just done searches for Python and Perl and Java, they might interpret that to mean, aha, this person is most likely, when they're searching for Ruby, looking for the programming language. This makes it very hard if you're a software engineer who's trying to look for gemstones, by the way. Because um, <laughs> as you know, the Ruby gem is not just a gem. It's also uh, part of the programming protocol. So even seemingly unrelated searches, and this, is, this, is, this gets very interesting. Even seemingly unrelated searches and behavior can modify the results. And I think this is Google showing their strength in pattern matching and machine learning. 
So they essentially have interpreted, uh, for example, as disparate things as me performing, I've seen performing searches around the SEO world and them interpreting that to mean I'm a technical person and therefore as I do searches related to Ruby or Python, they don't think the snake or the gem, the gemstone, they think the programming language uh, Python or the programming language Ruby, which is, which is pretty interesting, Ca connecting up what's essentially a marketing discipline, SEO, a technical marketing discipline, and connecting up those programming languages. Very, very interesting. So that modify, can modify your results as well. Uh, your social connections. So social connections was a page that existed on Google until last year. And it, in my opinion, is a very important page and a frustrating page that they've, they've now removed. But the social connections page would show, based on the account that you were inside of, all your friends who, sorry, all your contacts and how Google connected you to them and how they might influence your search results. So for example, it would say, uh, you know, Rand Fish at Gmail, which is my Gmail account that I don't actually use, is connected to Danny Sullivan because uh, Rand has emailed Danny Sullivan on that account and therefore we have these accounts that Danny Sullivan is connected to Google in one way or another. In fact, uh, his Facebook account and several other accounts were connected through his Quora account because Quora OAuths into those and Google has a, an agreement or whatever, an auth system with Quora. And so you could see, wow, you know, Google is exposing things that Danny Sullivan has shared on Facebook to me, not directly through Facebook, but through this uh, protocol that they've got with Quora. Quora. And, and, and that's fascinating. Those social connections can influence the content you're seeing, can influence the rankings where you see those things, right? So you may have never seen them before. They may have uh, changed the rankings themselves. And they can also influence the snippets that you're seeing. So for example, you know, when I see something that uh, Danny Sullivan has plus one or shared on Google Plus, or I see something that um, Darmesh Shah, for example, has shared on Twitter, it'll actually say, you know, your friend Darmesh shared this, your friend uh, Danny Sullivan shared this, or, or Danny Sullivan shared this. And, and then you can hover on that person and see some contact information about them. So fascinating ways that social connections are being used. Big takeaways here. If you are a business and you're thinking about doing marketing and SEO, you have to be aware that these changes are taking place. It's, it's not productive or valuable to get frustrated that not everyone is seeing the same auto-suggest results, the same results in the same order. You just have to be aware that, hey, you know, if we're going to be in a location, that location could be biasing for us or against us, especially if you're, you're not there or if something else is taking your place. Uh, if people are performing searches that are related to topics that might have more than one meaning, you have to make sure that your audience, you feel like your audience is uh, well tapped into and that they're a that they're performing searches, that they are uh, aware of your products, getting more content out there that they might be searching for, building a bigger brand, those things will certainly help. A lot of the offline branding kinds of things actually help considerably with this type of stuff. And of course, social connections, making sure that your audience is sharing so that the audience connected to them, even if they're not your direct customers. This is why social media strategy is so much about not just reaching people who might buy from you, but all the people who might influence them. Because remember that social connections will be influenced in this way. Right now, Google Plus is the most powerful way and most direct way to do this, but certainly there are others as well as the, as the social connections, the, the now removed social connections page helped show us. What about some indirect impacts? There's actually a few of these that are worth mentioning as well. Uh, so one of those indirect impacts that I think is very important is that you can see re-ranking of results, not just based on your usage, but this can happen or, or may happen, not for certain, but may happen based on patterns that the engines detect. So if they're seeing that a large number of people are suddenly switching away from searching uh, Ruby the gemstone to Ruby the language, they might bias to say, you know what, by default, we're going to show more results or more results higher up about Ruby the programming language. Or if they're seeing, boy, a lot of people in a lot of geographies, not just Seattle, when they perform a CoffeeWorks search, are actually looking for Seattle CoffeeWorks because that brand has built itself up so strongly. You know what? We're going to start showing the Seattle CoffeeWorks location over the other ones because of that, the pattern matching that we're seeing. That pattern matching can be a very powerful thing. Another great reason to build a great brand, have a lot of users, get, get a lot of people around your, uh, your product, your services, your company. Social shares, particularly the, 
what we've heard from the search engines, Bing's been a little more transparent about this than Google has, but what Bing's basically said is that social shares, the trustworthiness, the quality, and the quantity of those shares may impact the rankings too. And this is not just on an individual basis. So they're not just saying, you know, oh, well, uh, Danny Sullivan shared this thing with Rand, and so now we're going to show it to Rand. They're saying, boy, lots of people shared this particular result around this topic. Maybe we should be ranking that higher, even though it doesn't have the classic signals, and those might be, you know, things like keywords and, and links and, uh, uh, you know, what, all the other things, anchor text, whatever other things that they're using in the ranking algorithm, they might say, hey, the social shares are such a powerful element here, and we're seeing so much of a pattern around this that we're going to start re-ranking results based on that. Another great reason to get involved in social, even if you're just doing SEO. Auto-suggest. Auto-suggest can be your friend, it can also be your enemy, but w when you s do a search today, we, Elijah and I just tried this, and do a search for whiteboard space, they will fill in some links for you, paint, online, information. Then I did the same search on my phone, and what do you think? Whiteboard, whiteboard Friday was the, uh, I think it was the second or the third result there. S meaning, they've seen that I've done searches around SEO Moz before, right, and around SEO in general, and so they're thinking, aha, you, Rand, you're a person who probably is interested in Whiteboard Friday, even though you haven't done your ser that search before on this particular phone. I got a new phone recently. And that usage data and personalization, right, is, is affecting how auto-suggest is suggesting, or search suggest is working. Uh, auto-suggest, by the way, also location-aware and location-biased. So for example, if you were to perform this search, Whiteboard Space, in Seattle, you probably have a higher likelihood of getting Friday than in, uh, let's say, Hong Kong, right, where, where Whiteboard Friday is not as popular generally. I'm, I know we have Hong Kong fans and I appreciate you guys, of course, but those types of search suggests are based on the searches that are performed in a local region and to the degree that Google or Bing can do it, they will bias those uh, based on that, so you should be aware. For example, if lots and lots of people in a particular location, and I've done this at conferences, it's actually really fun to ask the audience, hey, would everyone please perform this particular search? And then you look the next day, and that's the suggested search, even though it, it hadn't been performed previously, right? So they're, they're looking at, oh, this is trending in this particular region. Lots of people in, uh, this was a conference in Portland, Oregon, where I tried this, a blogging conference, and it was really fun to see the next day that those results were popping up in that fashion. Uh, Auto-suggest, uh, so sorry, search queries. The search queries that you perform, but not just the ones that, that you perform, the search queries as a whole, right, kind of in an indirect, amalgamated, pattern matching way, may also be used to form those topic models and, and co-occurrence, uh, uh, you know, or brand associations that we've discussed before, which can have an impact on how search results work and how, how SEO works. Meaning that if lots of people start connecting up um, you know, the word, uh, the, the, the phrase SEO Moz with SEO or SEO Moz with inbound marketing or those kinds of things, it's very likely that, uh, or you might well see that Google is actually ranking pages on that domain, on SEO Moz's domain, higher for those keywords because they've built an association. Search suggest along with content are, or, uh, I'm sorry, search queries along with content are one of the big ways that they put those topics together and try and figure out, oh yeah, look, it seems like people have a strong association with um, you know, GE and washer dryers, or with Leica and cameras, or with uh, the gap in clothing. And therefore, when people perform those types of searches, we might want to surface those brands more frequently. You can see this in particular when you perform a lot of e-commerce related searches and particular brands come up. So if you, you know, do a search for outdoor clothing and things like um, Columbia Sportswear and REI and those types of brands are popping up as a suggestion, you, you get a strong sense of the types of connections that Google might build based on these things. All right, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Whiteboard Friday. Hope you have lots of uh, great comments, and I'd love to jump in there with you and suggestions on how people can dig deeper. And we will see you again next week. Take care.